we uh fought for you how I said shit. You know, we you a rock guy. You know, they gotta tell you that, right? Like, shit, you, you was one of the favorites. Yeah, you was our favorite, but you know, it didn't work like that. But Spike would still love to have you in this film if you would oblige. I said happily. And yeah, that's the ball got rolling from there. Got an agent. Met Fredro and Sticky, got to be in the studio with them the whole summer and watch them <laughs> record All We Got Is Us. Ain't that crazy? Chung King Studios, Quad, this yeah. one, the Puck Building, down in Soho, going to the Dev Jam party. My shit was instantly, it really, that's why my agent said, boy, boy, gonna right. have it rough out here. I'm coming in like this, you're gonna get knocked back down a couple. Right. I'm telling you it don't happen like that for everybody. Coming in like this. Yeah. You, you got dudes to pay still. You're going to cut and it's going to be like this. And Cynthia Cash from the artist group, best agent I ever had, told me that. Love her for that because she that's what keep me sane. Humble. Don't ever. You only as good as your last shit. So always grind to get to the next destination. And that's, I think, for me, would take the fun out of the shit, though. Yeah. Cause as soon as I book something, I'm off it. No I really I'm really off it. I'm telling you, man, y'all take too long to do anything, promote, whatever. Like, don't look back. I'm on, I'm this way. You know what I mean? I put that in the rear view. I gotta look at the future. I can't be harping on old projects, especially if they're not my babies. Yeah. Right? Cause actors got this with work for hire, but that's when we gotta start getting into taking more ownership. Right. You know what I mean? It started be, and then we won't have these strikes and all this unnecessary shit going on. Because that's what it is. They want quantity. They want quality, rather, over quantity now. They're going to be buying less. Yeah. Because people just putting these little joints to slap ups, like how they do them cribs in the hood. They doing the slap up flicks. And that's cool. Some shit like me. Now, I'm not, I'm not the, the anti. Independent dude, I like a lot of that Tubi shit. There's a lot of solid projects. You know, the last one I did better than my last. My dude produced Luke Steve. Shout out to Luke. Yeah. Shout out to Luke. He's the glue to a lot of shit like that. That a person like me with the experience. That's all. I don't think nothing else. Like I'm not better than nobody else doing the same thing, but just with the experience, might otherwise wouldn't tackle or take on as the challenge, right? Thinking there's something better in the horizon and it's just still about being creative and an artist. He's the glue to people like me understanding that. You understand? Right. And there's still longevity there. So, shouts out to dudes like that because then you can get some nice masterfully quality projects done with, with even new and no name talent. Yeah. But be entertained. And that's what the point is. You understand? Not by or limited to the reality show shit. Yeah. That's where people think the talent lie, right? You're gonna just get a reality show star and they're gonna turn up because they get viewers from acting silly all day yeah. or whatever, right? Nah, nah, like we gotta start still sticking to the basics and where you wanna really, this is your craft. Like I saw you in the joints and taking this shit serious. Reading yeah, your lines. Practicing like a month. Practicing, right? Yeah, yeah man. I wanted I, to do a good job. Yeah. I wanted to do a good job. I did. Yeah, because I've seen people think they ready because it's just like this shit look easy and it's like they yell action and you freeze up. Yeah. I don't do that, playboy. <laughs> I went really, really deep into a psychological thing yeah. about, about, about confidence. About confidence alone, right? Yeah. Just to get to the head of the character and the criteria. See? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's good. I already know. Speaking you. of, you know, we, we follow each other on IG, mm -hmm. and I've spoken about certain typecast roles that they expect mm -hmm. us to play. And right. as of late, they got this agenda where they try to put black actors in effeminate roles. Yes, yes. Have you haven't had any encounters with that? No. And see, this is the thing now. And, it's, and, and respectfully, all due respect to everybody in the business and in the acting world and the craft, it's what you invite. Yeah. It's what you invite. I'm not so happy to be here that I'm inviting anything against my morals and ethics. I'm looking at y'all. I don't play about none of that. You understand? Right. I'm for the kids for real. I don't play about nobody children. Right. Stand up shit for real. I'm not perfect. You know, I got flaws and all that. 
But like a man, I can admit shit when I'm wrong, right? right. But certain things you just not gonna get me for the sake of being a creative and, and expressing myself in the art that I just feel go against my ethics because there's more than one way to skin a cat. Right. Right? Now we talking about, you know, the the, the the masculinity of black men, right, and all of the above that they are trying to do when they get an a, a opportunity. I don't think they just producers and directors just wake up like, oh, let's see who we can emasculate today. Right. But just if it fit the criteria, like whatever go along with it, they, they when they get the opportunity, they're gonna do it. Right. And it's just more than one way to skin a cat. So yeah, I could play a homosexual that doesn't get physical with anyone to tell a story. Right. You understand? But then the part that go along with that is, will you believe it? Will you believe me? That's why they never came. <laughs> to, that's why they never came to you for it because right. we wouldn't believe it okay. the way you were. That's all I'm saying, my dude. But look, right? That's all I'm saying. There was a. One of your co-stars in, in The Wire played mm-hmm. a certain type of role. We're speaking of the late Michael K. Williams. Yes, sir. Great actor. Rest I appreciated yes, his contributions. Yes, I do, too. And I never considered the effects that his character could have on society until we started seeing killer homosexuals in society. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? More prevalent right. than, right? Exactly. So it, it kind of like came to life. You yes. worked. You worked with him. Yes. How did he feel about the responsibility connected with that role? I think, for the sake of, because I think I think the only way Mike could save himself is Mike was selfless in the in the sense that he wanted to do more for you than he could himself. But I used to tell Mike, "Can't say the world." That's not how that's about to work. All you could do is your best. Everybody got to face their own fears, look their own selves in the mirror, and get over them humps. And then maybe together shit will really be a better place to coexist. Right. So when the role came up, I'm telling Mike, when I knew it was Mike that got the role, because you yeah. know we read the script, right? And Mike didn't come in off that pilot. Omar's character is not in that pilot. So we're in Baltimore shooting the whole Three months before Mike came in, we, okay. we already got the uh, mojo going. Yeah, you understand what I mean. So I don't know who knew that when they implemented his character, they was gonna shake shit up or not. But ha because when I read that third episode, I believe it was season one, I said, "Damn, whoever this nigga about to be, boy, got a job on his hands. This shit about to go either way." Right. Mike's on set. Oh, you. And I knew Mike from just grinding. Mike's a lot older. Mm-hmm. But he did background work, you know. No, not to discredit Mike at all, but that's just how much. Because Mike's an old school dancing dude. Yeah. Been on tour with Janet Jackson, Madonna. I heard that. Not new to nothing, right? So now he's doing what he got to do to be respected in this world. So he's th- he doing his background work. We all did it for the movie Prison Song. Mm-hmm. So I knew who Mike was prior to the wire. From prison song, we spent all that time in CFCF filming. That was in real Philly. shit in Philly. Okay. That was real shit. Man, you done been through it, man. <laughs> God damn. Cause that, I remember there was a scene where they had niggas swam these out and we supposed to be on the ground. Right. And niggas raised the fuss about that. Like, hold on that. Whoa, our shits is out. Right. That really got us on the ground. This is a real prison. Yeah. Hey, hold on. We don't yeah. know what type of infections and staff. Yeah. So anyway, Mike was there for that. So there was the bond of respect from then to that enough for me to be able to tell him, bro, you got to finesse this. Right. I don't know if the balance between the job you're about to do and appeasing yourself is going to balance out. And I think therein lies the dark and his shit right. because he had to bring this character to life as good as he did he owned it he went into it and made you respect because you bugging out like you saw him before but you like we seen this dude every week in our living rooms yeah. it's not a one off 
Yeah. It was every week. Every week he gonna do something. Every week. Yeah. I ain't gonna front. And we was looking forward to it. Right. To, like, to what, see what he was gonna do next. Right. You know what I mean? And then it got. And then it. And then it gets to a graphic point where you covering your eye. Yeah. I yeah. did this a couple times. Right. Watching this show, like, damn, I'm on it. Shit, I used to be on set with bubbles yeah. with before makeup, breakfast, cooling, dapping it up, laughing. After this nigga get out of the wake up, yo, Dodger, don't touch me. He looked like a fiend. After they put them lesions on him, yeah. yo, I was really he like, yo, don't touch me. Like, my nigga, stop. He did Andre and chase me around the oh. I'm like, oh, yo, <laughs> cringe, my nigga, cringe. So everybody divulged into where they needed to to make it work. I still don't think none of us knew what we was doing, though. Yeah. We did not have a clue. All we was worried about was, yo, what time we getting out of here? Like, you rapping how many scenes? You got an early call time to yeah. All right, we going to the power plant down in the, 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 the harbor, you know, downtown yeah. in Baltimore. Yeah. We going to the power plant. That's what we was worried about. <laughs> Me, Wendell, Dominic, Lombardozzi, and Wes, shit, Idris, Wood, JD, Mike, everybody. Sonya, we was just like, yo, where we going? Right. <laughs> did, it, um, did it affect you personally when you seen... All of the shit that Marlo ended up doing while you was incarcerated. Because in my opinion, yeah. they was vulnerable without you. Like, you was the piece. I, 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 everybody used to always say, man, if WeeBay was home, that shit wouldn't be going like that. I, I ain't gonna front. It was times I used to be like, dang, I just didn't ever want to overstep and let the process be the process. Like, I wanted to call David Simon and I'm like, yo, y'all supposed to have me out dropping shit. Get me on the technicality. Something. Yeah. Bill Bond. Oh, 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 yes. They hit in weak spots. They go, oh, forget about it. Right. It did. It did affect me. I can't personally. It did. I was like, I needed a little more air time just to even that plane. Right. Not even about me. Not even about trying to get my shine on. But just like for the the storyline yeah. and, and the legacy of the Barksdale crew. Yeah. Yeah. Barksdale's, man. Yeah, Damn. man. <laughs> we was like working with Wood Harris. They needed, man. they needed. We oh man, classic big dog. That's that. He's the best. I remember he went off on set one time because they called me back for the third season, and you know they sprinkling me throughout the show because yeah, sure. I'm locked up. Yeah, and I had a two banging out a trailer, and I was tight about this shit. I was sucking my teeth and bitching, and all of a sudden Wood went off on the PA, came and said something about like. 10, 10 minutes to, you know, whatever, whatever, 10 minute warning. He just went off. Like, yo, why I got this man on set and he don't got the accommodations he rightfully deserved? This nigga been putting in fucking work around here. He, I, until it got to the point I was like, damn, I, I, I was like home in the bushes. Just like, damn, Wood went in. I yeah. didn't I ain't think he and he's the lead, And he's the lead actor. He's the lead actor, but right. just like, nah, because you showing up. You on time, you don't complain high. Yeah, you shouldn't be in the two bang up for the third season. Yeah. That's that just how it go, but I'll never forget that. I'll just never forget how he went. Like, you ain't really seeing right. the wood go off before. I, it seemed like he, he uh, just in character, it seemed like he really fucked with you to the point of somebody fucked with Wood Harris in real life, he might call Weebay on your butt. Like shit. That's what it's know, yeah, like. We used to, me and Wood used to have these powwows. In the room, I go to his room, he come to my room, and we just, you know, kick it. Like, real, these real powwows. So, the we being Avon shit resonated on screen. I peeped that through our relationship. I might have not if right. we didn't kick it like that off camera. Okay. Like, yeah, we rode them Amtrak's back home, the Macella Expresses, kicking it back to New York on the weekend. Yeah. Shit. Like, yeah, real shit. So, that's the bro. I got big respect. And, he the GOAT, like he do this shit effortlessly, really. You just watch him, the subtleties, and he hit his marks. It's crazy. Yeah. Did y'all know, or could you feel that y'all was creating something that was gonna be big like that? Nah. That shit was so, I was in jail at the time. Yeah, you was locked that up. That shit was, them Thursdays couldn't, it was Thursday, Thur right? Thur it, that yeah. shit couldn't Thursday come Thursday or Sunday. I thought that. Might have been Thursday Sunday. and they, they replay it on Sunday Some or something like right that. There. You might be right. Them shits couldn't come fast enough, I know, man. I know. And they started having the watch parties in like the middle of the first season. I was like, 
I used to just look up because then they would call me. I did a lot of the walkthroughs for us. Like I was the go-to dude right. for the walkthroughs, whether it was like, you know, calling Jamie, JD, Snoop, Mike, Idris, Wood. You know, I, I was the go-to guy for most of them. And then um, I just used to bug out because I'm like, yo, we getting booked for these shits. And I didn't feel like we were making history. Yeah. I just we were just coming to work. We all talent though. Like every if you look at everybody's resume, they not here by accident. There's no you never felt like that type of shit. Like this is just some fly by night lucky shit. But I don't think we just knew we was making history. We, we didn't. It there's no way. <laughs> As the show went on and Omar's presence I actually made the show better. It did. But you co-sided like, man, this is shit, shit popping. Cause it's one thing y'all y'all recording the episodes, right? But then you still gotta walk around in general society and feel the energy from people that's watching this yeah, shit. That's a fact. That's a fact. Cause we done got the fights at the club and all that. In DC, I got locked up fighting with one of the. I think it was like the Baltimore Raven nigga. I don't know which one of them it was, but they was in there hating. They was in there hating. We had the y'all the city action. bigger. Y'all the biggest niggas in the city. Man, y'all ain't athletes. Listen, man, I popped off on one of these niggas. Cause that's when the what you call us was this shit, the little two way joints. Yeah. So you used to ping, right? Yeah. It was some little thing. I never had one, but you used to do. So I'm standing there with the little shorty. I'm trying to put some, uh, we trying to get out of there. I guess I'm in some way. He trying to do the thing with us. He coming with me already, but okay. So he pushed me out the way, like the ball of my. Cause we, I remember when we got there, they were sitting in the section already. Right. So we came in there hot, turning yeah. up. Yo, what up, play? Bro? I'm tapping niggas. Yo, what's up? Yo, we getting these bottles. What we doing, baby? Y'all sitting in here with the little legs crossed shit. Right. Like you know what I mean? Sophisticated shit. Like yo, we turning up. We in dream right now. First season. Why the whole cast? It's all of us. Yeah. Fredro, Dominic, both Dominics, Idris. JD, so it's all of us. Like, right. we really pulled up deep that night. And I got bad because I done popped off. And then Fred was going to say, I saw the whole thing, Hodge. You ain't had to hit him. You just wanted to fight. I said, I don't want to fight. I had a joint. We was about to go back to the. But how I want to. Nah, he violated it. What happened? And they had to bail me out, Idris and uh, JD. Okay. Little hundred dollars. <laughs> I had to spend the night, little hundred dollars. But. We, we, we didn't know because we out in the public and, and the people did start showing that love. It started getting crazy fast. Real fast. Yeah. yeah. We talking right. about that fifth, sixth episode, yeah. right? Because we, cause we did 12, 13. Yeah. It wasn't this 8 and 10 shit. Yeah, we did the 13 piece. So, yeah, by that sixth episode, shit was litty for us in that DMV area.